Okay, let's talk about dividing fractions. So uh, this is uh, pretty easy, but in math, things that are easy tend to be easy to uh, make a mistake with, right? So easy doesn't always uh, equal that you're always going to get it uh, correct. Obviously, um, actually, uh, it's kind of uh, the contrary. <laughs> when you start le learning a lot of things in math, and a lot of things are so much simple and easy, but as you kind of like collect all these easy things in your memory and like, oh, yeah, I know how to do that, but I forgot how to do that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, these are the things that you hear as a math teacher. Like, oh, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. If I heard I knew that, again, if I had a nickel for every time I heard the word, I knew that. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, guess what? You know, uh, everyone could say that, right? So dividing fractions, it is easy, but... Um, it's easy to confuse as well, but it's extremely important. And what we're going to do in this video is get you to remember this, put it in your uh, math toolkit for the long run. So we're going to get into that in a second. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed a ton of full, complete, comprehensive math courses. I mean, I have a lot of math courses. So if you want to check those out, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. So whether you need to take a full online math course or you need uh, help with the course you're taking um, and you like my teaching style, you're gonna get a massive amount of instruction and solve problems, et cetera, and, and a lot of other things as well. So um, I also offer some notes that you might be interested in picking up. Um, those are gonna range from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. I'll leave the link to those in the description. Also, I believe you'll see this underneath, uh, the notes underneath this video. But uh, anyways, all the links there will be in the description. Okay, so let's get to this problem. Two-fifths divided by one-fourth, how do we divide fractions? Well, uh, the way we're gonna divide fractions is we're going to write uh, division problems into multiplication problems. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna divide fractions per se. We're gonna change them into multiplication problems and then we're gonna take care of that problem. So I'm gonna get into how to do that all in a second, but let's review real quick how to multiply fractions. So let's say I have two thirds, uh, let's do that a little bit better, two thirds times, um, oh, I don't know, let's say, and use something more exciting, let's say five uh, fourths, okay? So how do you multiply fractions? Well, you gotta know how to multiply fractions before you can divide the uh, fractions, okay? So multiplication of fractions, all we're gonna do is multiply the numerators, okay? We're gonna put our answer right here, and then we're gonna multiply the denominators, okay? So two times five, let's write it out, two times five and three times four, okay? So two times five, of course, is 10. Three times four is 12. And then I can reduce this down to um, uh, two goes in this five and two goes in this six. So this would be your final answer. Now, some of you would be like, oh, yes, couldn't you just like cross cancel two and then multiply five, six? Yes, you could do that as well. So if you're good with your cross, cancel, uh, cross canceling, you could see that here, three times four. Okay, you can put that like a little two, and then you're left with five and three times two. You would get to this nice simplified answer. But as long as you understand how to multiply fractions, that's the main deal. Okay, now let's talk about a fraction like this. Okay, how about three and one half? Uh, let's multiply that by uh, one fourth. Okay, well, in order to do this problem, I'm going to have to change this mixed number into an improper fraction. So 3 and 1 half is what? 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1. That's 7 halves times 1 fourth. Okay. So anytime you're dealing with a mixed number, whether it's multiplication or division of fractions, turn these into improper fractions. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply across. So 7 times 1 is 7 Two times four is eight, and there you go. That's your answer. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to know about um, dividing fractions, okay? You gotta know how to multiply. So that was a quick review on multiplication of fractions. Now, let me go ahead and erase my 
little chalkboard here. And as a math teacher, uh, I like to think of myself as an old school math teacher because I love teaching on the chalkboard. I'd get all chalky and all that white chalk dust flying around everywhere. Of course, I'd have different color chalks and whatnot. It was awesome. I like teaching on the whiteboards too, but this is this is pretty close. I like uh, using my computer as well. All right, so so we got multiplication of fractions down. Okay, uh, quick review on it. Now let's talk about the mechanics of how we're going to change a division problem into a multiplication problem. How's this going to happen? Well, this is kind of the secret sauce to multiplying uh, or sorry, dividing fractions. Okay, and this is where um, a lot of students get confused. All right, so here we go. So you look at, you identify where the division symbol is at. Of course, it's right here. The fraction to the right, immediately to the right, always to the right of the division symbol, you're going to flip, okay? And when you flip it, it turns into multiplication, okay? Let's see how this works here, all right? So this is going to be two-fifths, okay? I'm going to flip this guy. Turn that into, this is going to become multiplication. I got to flip this fraction. So one fourth, when I flip it, okay, there's a fancy word uh, called the reciprocal. I'm finding the reciprocal of this. It's going to be four over one. Okay, all I'm doing is I'm putting the denominator to where the numerator is at and the numerator where the denominator is at. Okay, you kind of see that, right? So one fourth becomes four over one. And now I can go ahead and use my awesome uh, skills and multiplying fractions. I got two times four is eight. Five times one is five and I'm done. Okay. So of course you always want to make sure that you have this fraction fully reduced, fully simplified. Okay. Now, one thing that a lot of you will want to do, and I'm going to advise you that you do not, is you'll say, okay, eight fifths is my answer. Yay. I'm done. Well, a lot of you are going to feel the tendency to be like, well, I can write that as uh, the following. Okay, let me just erase this. So I'm giving you some really good advice here, okay? So eight-fifths, a lot of you are going to be like, oh, but can't I do this? All right, give myself more room. Come on, eraser. Okay, you're going to want to turn change this into a mixed number, Okay. So you're going to be like, oh, 5 goes into 8, 1. 1 times 5 is 5. The remainder is 3. Okay, but I can write that as 1 and 3 fifths. Yes, you can, and you need to know how to do that. You need to know that this improper fraction is the same as this mixed number up here. Okay, but don't do that. Okay, when you get your final answer done on a test or quiz, just make sure it's fully simplified, fully reduced. That you must do. Okay, but don't go volunteering yourself and changing your answers into mixed numbers. Okay, two reasons why. One, it takes time, okay? Uh, you're going to have to do all this work and write this down. Most math teachers should be fully uh, happy that you got this answer and it's fully simplified. The second reason that you don't want to do it is I've seen just thousands of times students have the right answer right here as an improper fraction. Then they go like, try to, you know, do this and then they mess up over here in their division when they're trying to turn this into a mixed number. And then they give me some answer that's, you know, let's say the answer is obviously one and three fifths. And they come back and they go, oh, it's one and one fifth. They turn this in. And then I got to do this on their paper, you know, and then they're going to get sad. And then they're going to be like this to me. Ah, you know, so, uh, you know, save yourself the hassle. Now, you need to know how to go from improper fractions to mixed numbers. But... In, um, you absolutely need to know how to do that. But uh, unless your teacher specifically tells you to do that, don't volunteer to do it. I see a lot of um, uh, students who just they feel the need to uh, turn every single improper fraction into mixed numbers. Okay, Just got to simplify them. Anyways, let's move on and uh, take a look at some other um, situations here. Now, we're talking about, let's go back to this, two-fifths divided by three eighths, right? So the mechanics here, okay, we need to know, whoops, we need to know how to multiply fractions. I think we got that down pretty good. We need to be able to go from a mixed number fraction, okay, into an improper fraction, okay? So hopefully you know how to do that. And then we need to know how to find 
the reciprocal of fractions, okay? Flipping fractions, kind of like how you flip a pancake, if you will, if you can actually do that. If I try to flip a pancake, it would certainly end up on the floor. Okay, but let's just practice the reciprocal uh, real quick, okay? So we got the division sign. We know we're going to have to uh, flip this fraction. So we got 3 eighths. Um, let's just come up with, let's do a quick exercise here on uh, finding the reciprocal. So 3 eighths, let's say uh, 1 fourth, and now let's have this number over here of 7. Okay, so let's just make sure you know how to find the reciprocal of each of these guys. All right, so 3 eighths, what would be the reciprocal? Okay, when you flip it, all right, hopefully you said 8 thirds. Okay, we're just going to flip it upside down and you would be correct. How about 1 fourth? Yes, you are right. It's going to be 4 over 1. All right, so that is the reciprocal. Okay, how about 7? Now, you might be like, 7, ah, this is a trick problem. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's just 7. Okay, wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, any number, when I want to think of a number as a fraction, a whole number, like 5, 7, 2, doesn't make a difference, always put it over 1. Okay, so 7 divided by 1 is 7. So now it's just easier to... Uh, see the reciprocal, which is going to be one seventh. Okay. All right. So these are the skills that we need to have to be able to divide fractions. So let's just all wrap this up into one final problem. By the way, um, you know, let's just talk about uh, this problem. Let's say three and one half divided by, oh, I don't know, say two fifths. Okay. So we'll do this as our little wrap up problem. But, um, something to keep in mind that I'm not uh, mentioning in, the, in this video too much because I don't want to confuse it, is uh, when you're working with negative, positive, negative values. So I can have a negative number right here. So negative three and one half divided by a positive two fifths. So just a quick review. Remember on division, if you have a negative divided by a negative, the answer is positive. Okay. If I have a positive divided by a positive, then my answer is positive. Now, if I have a negative divided by a positive or a positive divided by a negative, all right, the answer is negative, okay? So if the signs are different, the answer is a negative, all right? That's what you've got to remember. If the signs are the same, the answer is positive. So you've got to know your rules uh, for positive and negative numbers, okay? Because you're definitely going to see fractions where you're going to have positive and negative values. And there's more, of course, I can make this more and more complicated, but really... I wanted you to get these uh, fundamental skills down. Okay, so this is going to be our final exam problem for this video. So if you want to pause this video and go ahead and do it yourself, that would be cool. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. All right, so first, first things first, if there's mixed numbers, I got to take care of these mixed numbers and write them as improper fractions. So two times three is six. Six plus one, that's seven halves divided by two fifths. Okay, let me write that a little bit neater. See, I'm a stickler for being neat, as you should be. All right, so now here I got my division. I need to flip this guy upside down, all right? And that's going to become a multiplication problem. So this would be 7 halves times, okay, 5 halves. That's the reciprocal, right? So i got to make sure, all right, the fraction right to the right, not the one to the front, always to the right. Okay, you're going to flip it upside down and then you're going to change division to multiplication. So there's two things you got to do there, right? Don't flip it and then still have a division symbol there and then uh, do multiplication steps. If you if you do this and you do a multiplication, your teacher, depending on how nice they are, I'm a very nice math teacher, but I still would take a few points off just so you can get the picture. Don't do that, okay? All right, so this is where we're at in this problem. Seven halves, okay? Uh, times uh, five halves, all right? And we'll get the final answer here. So seven times five, if my arithmetic is still pretty good, it's 35, and two times two is four. And you can see we all have prime factors here, so there's no opportunity to uh, further reduce that problem. Again, don't be a hero and turn this guy into a mixed number, all right? Because then, you know, it's gonna take you time, and you can run the risk of making an error and uh, but anyways, this is division of fractions. All right. And this goes to any fractions, even in algebra. We'll just throw in a little bonus thing. If I had X over Y divided by Z over W, same thing applies. Division here. I'm going to flip this guy. 
So that's going to be x over y, okay, multiply by w over z. Okay, that's the reciprocal. I'm just flipping, and then I'm going to multiply across like so. So this would be uh, xw over yz, okay? All right, so that's why it's so important to get these fundamental arithmetic skills down, all right? And uh, listen, there's no, uh, wherever you're at in math, okay, don't feel bad <clears throat> about, uh, you know, your current math skills, okay? You're, you're looking to, you know, maybe, you're, maybe you're, uh, you're younger and you're watching this video and you're just learning this for the first time. But I am telling you is this, you got to, math builds upon itself, okay? You don't want to look like this guy, all right? This guy right here, this math student, oh my goodness, I knew that, I knew it. Please, please give me back some mercy on my test, God, dot, dot, dot. Listen, I get it, right? I was that person too, believe me. When I was uh, in school, I wasn't the greatest uh, math student. Uh, yeah, it's because I wasn't really the greatest uh, student back in those days. You know, I was kind of interested in other things. And I didn't really have a lot of discipline. It wasn't until I went in the Marine Corps that kind of shaped me up, squared me away, and then I kind of, you know, started from there. But what I'm saying is you got to take every single one of your math skills important that you learn, all right, because it's cumulative. And as you continue to learn math, all right, you're going to need to know all your skills from elementary school, middle school, high school, okay? To do high school math, you're going to need to know middle school math. Do middle school math, you're going to need to know elementary math. And in elementary math, you learn a lot. Middle school, you learn a lot, okay? So even if you're 18, 19, 20, 30, 40, 50, it doesn't make a difference. We have a tendency to look back on this kind of math and be like, oh, that's just basic math. That's, you know, I can, I, you know, I know that stuff. Listen, I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of math topics covered here. Place value, percent, fractions, decimals, ratios, et cetera, et cetera. So really focus in, work hard on building your math skills. There's no shortcuts. That's what I'm kind of really trying to emphasize here. There are no shortcuts in learning math. So learn from a teacher that you'd like to learn from. Hopefully I'm helping you out. And uh, if you like my teaching style, I have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. I love teaching math, as you can tell. So, um, you know, I know I have a wide range of topics from basic math to more advanced math. And then again, if you really, really need serious math help, then you might want to check out my math help program. Uh, and then, of course, you can always pick up a pair of notes as well. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.